Paul. My name is Lynn Storms and I am very grateful and happy to welcome you to our virtual worship service today on this sunny, warm, and beautiful uh, spring day. Um, I have been loving the chatter of the birds and the buds on the flowers and the trees. And I've especially been enjoying this spring uh, babying my seedlings in the basement. And right now I am anticipating in just a few weeks uh, putting those in the ground. So I am very excited about that and, and all that springtime brings. I hope you have uh, found some time this week uh, with this beautiful weather to really find some springtime joys uh, for yourself. I uh, have a few announcements this morning. Um, the first one is from Justice and Mercy. Their Zimbabwe Health Kits uh, mission is underway. There is a shopping list that is posted um, at the church on the bulletin board. And um, I can just attest, I did my kit last week and a little tidbit, I purchased all of my items, shopping list items, uh, through the Walmart grocery app and pick up. So I didn't even have to go into the store and search diligently for all that stuff. So um, just a tidbit, it, it made it a little bit easier. Uh, our goal for the church is 50 kits. So um, those kits need to be turned in by May 23rd. Happy shopping. This evening, we are having our first outdoor worship service. This is the first of two outdoor uh, services that we have planned for May. The next one will be in a couple weeks. But for tonight's um, outdoor service, it is at 5 p.m. in the back parking lot adjacent to the playground. Uh, there will be a message by Lon. There will be a few songs by the praise band. And then there'll be Holy Communion. Uh, Holy Communion will be very safe. Uh, for those of you who haven't done it uh, since COVID, uh, the elements will be in a little Ziploc bag. Everybody will get their own Ziploc bag. So um, just for those of you who do, haven't done it before, that's the way it will be done. If you are attending, uh, please bring a chair. Um, also bring a mask and we will be social distancing. Hope to see you there. Okay, we are celebrating communion, Holy Communion today in virtual service as well. And we forgot to tell you that last week. So I'm telling you now, if you wanna just press pause on your remote and go run and get your communion elements, uh, your juice, your crackers, your bread, bring it on back and you'll have it all ready for later in the service. Now, uh, I think we're ready to start worship. Um, and we're going to start today with a requested favorite from Zella and Brenda in Christ Alone.
Good morning. One of the great privileges we have as the people of God is to be able to go to God in prayer and make our needs known, trusting that God will meet our every need. At the same time, we want to open our ears to God, to listen to God's voice, to get direction for the future. As we pray for those who are sick, those who are mourning, those who are just having a really tough time coming out of this pandemic, let us also pray for ourselves. Pray that God will forgive us for the opportunities we have missed, that God will forgive us for the things we've done contrary to His will. Forgive us for apathy. Forgive us for not caring about our fellow man. At the same time, I would ask that you would pray this day that God would give us wisdom and courage. His Word says that we have not uh, we do not have a spirit of fear, but rather we've received the spirit of adoption. And so in confidence that we are God's children, may God give us wisdom and courage to go forward into the future, not in fear, but rather knowing that God is with us and will never desert us. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Good morning, St. Paul. We, of course, want to remember all of those who were mentioned by name. Uh, by lawn, um, if whoever is suffering, whoever needs comfort, whoever needs healing, St. Paul is praying for you. This morning, I would like to share with you my very favorite prayer, and that is the prayer of St. Francis. Let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love where there is injury thy pardon and where there is doubt let me so faith where there's despair let me bring hope and where there is darkness let me bring light and where there is sadness let me bring joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen and amen. Good morning. Our scripture for today is 1 John chapter 3, verses 15 to 24. Hear the word of the Lord. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart, and you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, Let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God, even if we feel guilty. God is greater than our feelings, and He knows everything. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence, and we will receive from Him whatever we ask, because we obey Him and do the things that please Him. And this is His commandment, we must believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as He commanded us. Those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with Him and He with them. And we know He lives in us because the Spirit He gave us lives in us. This is the Word of God for the people of God. don't really preach from 1 John very much. It's only about a page and a half long in a small Bible. It was written probably around 100 AD, 
And some people suppose that it was written by the same person that wrote the Gospel of John. Um, that dude would have been an old fellow <laughs> if, it had, if it was, but there are certain parallels. If you're familiar with the Gospel of John, you know John talks about a lot about love. I guess the most famous verse that we all know is John 3.16. For God so loved the world. 1 John is about love too. But it's the Christian church's dealing with the resurrection of Jesus Christ for nearly two generations. 1 John is trying to look back at the resurrection of Christ and to come to some understanding of what that really means. I love 1 John because in the text that Jesse read, it reduces the Christian life to two basic essentials. I love things that are simple. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and love one another. Simple on the surface, right? <laughs> Very complicated, though, when you try and live it out. I, I'm reminded of a story of a sculptor who moved into town he wasn't very talkative. He was kind of the artistic type. You know how those artistic people are. He moved into town and never spoke to anyone. And a week, about after a week after he got there, this big, massive hunk of marble was brought and put in the center of town. The sculptor never said anything. He went out every day and took his hammer and his chisel and tap, 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 tap. tap. This went on for weeks, and the townspeople started gathering to watch this tap, 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 until after quite a period of time, they started noticing that he was carving a horse out of this huge, massive hunk of marble. Finally, one of the townspeople got up the courage and walked up to him and said, Sir, you obviously are very talented. All you have is a blueprint that you look at and you tap, 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 and magically this horse is appearing. That's very difficult to do. And finally the sculptor spoke his first words and he said, oh no, not difficult at all. All you do is take your hammer and you chisel and you chip away everything that's not horse. Simple? and yet impossibly intricate. So it is living the Christian life to believe in God, to believe in Christ, and to love one another. When John refers to believing in Christ, my brothers and sisters, I don't think he's uh, talking about just acknowledging Jesus as the Son of God in some kind of theoretical Theobabel way of thinking. To believe in the Bible means to invest one's whole self in that person. To believe in Jesus Christ is to entrust everything to Him. Both your good days and your bad days. Both your celebrations and your sorrows. Even your heartaches, you trust to God. And trust that even if God has allowed this negative into your life, He has at least permitted it. But also believing that God promises with every challenge to give you the strength to endure. That's difficult sometimes, isn't it? Oh, Sunday morning's pretty easy. I put on a robe and I put on my microphone. I sit in front of a bunch of people who believe. We confirm each other's hope. How can you not believe when the choir sings the way the ladies have played and sung today? My faith just soars. But come Monday morning, when breakfast is burned... <laughs> When I get four telephone calls before I even roll out of bed, 
I'm reminded of the fellow who prayed to the Lord, Lord, this has been a wonderful day. I haven't gotten mad. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't said any bad words and I haven't become impatient. But Lord, I'm going to get up now and I need all your help. Been there? Amen. We've all been there. But to understand those challenges that we face as permitted by God, to help us grow in patience and strength, and to learn to trust Him with everything that we are and everything that we have, frees us from ever having to live in fear again. John comments on this, but sometimes we don't feel that way. <laughs> his way of saying that is, is our hearts condemn us. I know that I know that I know that God's salvation lives within me, but the reality is sometimes I see evidence in my life that contradicts that because this life is not simple. And yet John assures us that even when we don't feel like we're on course, God knows our hearts. God knows what's going on in our hearts. And as we try and live as God calls us to live, He buoys us up in those difficult times and give us courage to go on. And if that part isn't difficult, the second part of John's formula to living the Christian life is even more difficult. Love one another. John makes it very clear he's not talking about an emotion here. We know that to be the agape love of God. Some of us are very lovable. I'll not look up from my Bible because some of us are not. And yet, we're commanded to love one another. John says love is the way we act towards each other. And he holds up as an example of what true love is True love in John's mind is Jesus giving Himself for us on Good Friday. Loving one another is putting other people before yourself. Loving one another is tolerating people who you disagree with, but doing more than tolerating them. Being willing to put yourself behind their needs so that they may draw closer to Christ. Leslie likes them high notes. Have you noticed? I like Leslie when she talks like she comes from Big Stone Gap. Amen. Amen. And some of the music that Leslie sings, I, I would rather hear Bill and Glory Gaither because I'm kind of come from the country. But you know what? Regardless if I like the music that Leslie sings, I'm commanded to love her and appreciate the gift that she has. Churches have a hard time seeing themselves as united because you see, it's not about the other person, it's about themselves, my preference. I know that I have a good parking place out there, and I know I get to stand up 20 minutes on a Sunday. But this church is not about the preacher. This church is about Jesus. And Jesus says that if I'm going to live in Him, then I must love you. And if that doesn't sound threatening, He also says, you've got to love me. But John takes it even farther. If you think about it, like in the Gospel of Mark that was written pretty close to the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, Mark understood Jesus basically as our Savior. 
Jesus came to die for our sins so that we might spend heaven with God. His understanding of Christ is basically atonement. Anyone want to say, praise God for that? <laughs> praise God for that. But as you get to later Christian thought, like say um, in the latter books that Paul wrote, past Romans, because Romans pretty much looks at it that way too, they start understanding Christ as an example. It's the theology that, remember the bracelets, what would Jesus do that we all wore, or some of us wore? It's the idea that, that I can go through my life and then when decisions have to be made, I should ask, what would Jesus have me do in this circumstance? So Christ is an example. But when you get to the second century Christian thought, it's starting to develop that Christ is not only an example, but He's a type. Did you notice at the end of the reading that Jesse read, it says we can have confidence that we are in Christ because the Spirit lives within us. It's wonderful to mimic Jesus. But that's not the final goal and not why Jesus came. Jesus could have been an example if the story of Easter ended on Good Friday. But the resurrection of Jesus hints that there's more to life than just being forgiven. There is the internal transformation in one's life to not only being like Christ, but allowing Christ to live in us. Jesus says, I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Paul would say, when anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. This process that God wishes for us to go through after we have reconciled ourselves to God, what the world calls being saved, we call sanctification. It is us not only mimicking Christ, but it is allowing the Holy Spirit to work within us so that we might be for the world the hands and feet of Jesus. We become like that slab of marble that this great sculptor is chipping away at us to remove everything that is not Jesus until all the world sees only Him. Now, I granted, God is the sculptor who holds the chisel. But my brothers and sisters, you and your free will place the chisel where the chiseling needs to occur. It is this process whereby I don't have to struggle to like Leslie. I don't have to walk into the church and go to a different place than Leslie is in, so we just tolerate each other. It is that God has so changed my spirit and my life that I celebrate her because she is a sister in Christ created in God's image. And whether I like her music or not, and I'm only kidding now, you know I love your music. I could feel the darts coming from the choir loft. Even though I might not... God changes me so that step by step, bit by bit, chisel by chisel, God allows me to love my sister like Jesus loves my sister. That's why love is not a feeling. It's just something that we do. And when we do it, we know the Spirit lives within us. The sad reality is some people 
give their life to Jesus and the only thing that changes in their life is where they go on Sunday morning. Still living in darkness. And even if God wanted to change them, they're not going to let them change them because that's just me. That's just who I am, Mike. You're going to have to get along with it, Mike. You're going to have to love me. The Bible says so. No. Here I am, Lord. I accept you as my Savior. My life is not my own. I have been bought with a price. Now, God, you make of me what you see. And give me the strength and the courage to continue on. When the early Methodists met after the great revivals of the Great Awakening, they formed into small groups and bands. The preacher was long gone, by the grace of God. (laughs) And the lay people met together in small accountability groups. And when they met, they would ask this question, how goes it with your soul? What is God doing in your life? What areas are God changing? It wasn't to criticize. It wasn't to ask each other, oh, you're miserable because you're not making any... It was to uplift each other and, and to give each other confidence that because their life wasn't perfect, the Spirit still lived within them And they could go forward. So can I ask you a question this morning, my brothers and sisters? How how goes it with your soul? What part of the marble of your old self would God like to change but won't change without your permission? You see, His Spirit was in you. The hammer is raised. Now, do you have the courage to put the chisel where it needs to go? You see, it isn't about salvation. That was settled 2,000 years ago on a hill called Mount Calvary. That's been settled. God has given you His Spirit. And now God seeks to use you to not only receive abundant life, but to share life with those around you. We do that by the way we love each other. Giving ourselves to each other for His glory. There's a reason why that cross is in the center of the church. He is the center of our life. And to Him be glory and power and dominion forever and ever. Amen and amen. Dear friends, whenever we come before the Lord, and especially as we celebrate human uh, communion together, we have the wonderful opportunity to come before our Lord and to admit that we have not always lived up to all we have been called to be. Therefore, in this time of confession, this time of opening our hearts, let us remember that God is merciful and just, eager to offer grace and love Therefore, let us pray. Gracious God, source of all life, Lord of mercy and grace, hear our prayer. We come before you in need of healing, the healing of our bodies and our souls, the healing of our relationships, the healing of our pride and fear and apathy. We know that with you nothing is impossible, not even our healing, not even the restoration of the whole world. We pray that you will heal us, that you will heal our world, so that we would be free to serve and to love and to dream and to be, 
as Christ calls us, Amen and Amen. Dear friends, the Lord is with us. As we lift our hearts before God, let us give thanks and praise. We do indeed praise you, eternal God, for out of your thought you spoke the world into spinning beauty. After scooping together a little earth, you animated humans with your heart's breath. Your glory shines forth, and out of the soil comes abundant harvest, wheat whirling in wind's delight, grapes clinging to the vine. You rain down your compassion and feed us with mercy when we want more than our share and pollute all the works of your hands. You let us sit in our own stench till we cry out. Then you stretch forth your hand to wash all clean. You grow prophets to lead us into freedom's plenty. In the fullness of time, you yourself came forth in Jesus, and creation rejoiced as its redemption drew near. Oceans danced with the light of the moon. Mountains murmured delight. Trees trembled in praise. Flowers burst forth in song. Wolves howled in harmony. And sheep kicked up their heels. For all your good gifts, we give you thanks and praise. And with all of creation and all the saints and angels, we offer you back our breath as we praise, as we join the universe in praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O Lord Jesus, born a poor boy, a nobody, yet very God of very God. Out of your plenty you entered our want, And out of salvation's health, you heal our disease. Out of the fullness of your divinity, you trample the demonic dominion of death. In the midst of human lack, you make a feast. Before the breaking of your body, you sat at the table with your followers and broke bread, saying, Take, eat. This is my body for you. You celebrated with wine the cup of the divine goodness, overflowing with salvation's joy, saying, Take, drink, the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. With thanksgiving for your providence in Christ, we keep these mysteries proclaiming the faith in all that we do as our sacrifice of praise. Dying, you destroyed death. Rising, you restored life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Move once more, O Holy Spirit, across us, the face of your new creation in Christ, that with the cup of salvation your blood may course through our lives, and with the bread of life we may be the body in ministry to the world. Use us as instruments of your work of salvation, that others may join our song of thanksgiving, not just this day and at this time, but in every day and every time. Through Christ, in Christ, with Christ, in unity with the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory and dominion be yours, now and forevermore. Dear friends, the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? And the cup of salvation for which we give thanks, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? These gifts of God are for all of God's people. Amen. Now if you would take a piece of the bread that you have collected, hold it before you. Dear brother, dear sister, the body of Christ given for you. Let us see. Now, if you will raise your cup, my brother, my sister, the blood of Jesus Christ shed for you. Let us drink.
Thanks be to God. May we pray? Out of your abundance you fed us what we need, sparing none of your good gifts in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now may we live as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and Amen. When Jesus first celebrated this meal, it says that they got up from the table and sang a hymn together. Let us conclude this morning's worship with a wonderful song of praise from the music of St. Paul.
will be forever mine. You are forever mine. Well, it's been another great day at St. Paul United Methodist Church in Withville, Virginia, and it's time for us to go back out into the world. The world that Jesus died to save, the world that he is sanctifying us to go out and spread his love in. So as we leave this place, know that you are loved and cared for here. And as we leave together, we leave with him, in him, and through him. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Hope to see you next week. Sometimes miracles are simply good people with kind hearts sent to you as a gift from God.